Now, Creality sent us several weeks ago the K1C, and we've been doing a lot of printing, both PLA, PETG, ABS, and what the C stands for in the K1C, carbon fiber. They sent us a couple rolls of PLA CF to test out, and the prints have come out really well. I have not seen or had one failed print. And that has to do with a lot of the changes that they made with this printer. First of all, we're going to talk about some of the things that uh, have been happening with the K1 uh, that have, you know, created some concern. First of all, the door. This door swings too easily. Notice how I'm just moving it forward and back. The K1C door, notice the difference. It kind of has some tension there that holds it into place. And also they've uh, worked on the glass itself, making it more durable and making sure that you don't have those shatter instances like we've seen so much happening. Uh, the other thing that they've done with this is that they've included the actual feet that you see right here came standard. Uh, the camera that you have inside is also standard, the AI camera, which you would have to upgrade on the K1. Now, as we take a look at the internals, one of the things that you'll see as we compare the two printers, that the actual pulleys on each side are a little bit smaller on this version compared to the other one. Uh, you also then have some improvements that were done to the nozzle. And they did give us a brand new bed, which I'm going to show you in a second, or actually a PAI sheet. Now, I'm not using it. You'll notice that I'm using an aftermarket sheet. Uh, this is what the sheet looks like right here. And I've been doing a lot of printing. I do a lot of functional parts, so you see some jig uh, markings right here. One of the things that you'll notice is that with this bed, this is a plate for PLA. You can see how it's indicated there. It does have a wiper, a nozzle wiper. I love that. But what I don't like is that when you flip this over, uh, it's only usable on one side, right? Uh, because the actual wiper is part of the bed. I wish they had made it part of the plate here and that it was something that was removable and replaceable. This really limits the functionality of this, this sheet itself. So I went ahead and I switched it with the sheet that I've been using on my K1C or my K1 and I've been using this and I really like this one because it's a two-sided sheet. So you can see on this side it has that carbon fiber look and on this side it has uh, this more uh, traditional look which does really well with prints and the wiping effect does take place right here and it hasn't seemed to um, you know had any effects negative effects that is right so uh, the bill plate is again is going to be the same we'll go ahead and tilt down so that you can see that right there so the bill plate is again the same volume that you saw with the k1 220 by 220 by 250 and what you also notice, and this started coming out with some of the newer models, where you actually have this print information, right? So you could tell the generations of the K1, and when you look at my K1 in a couple seconds, I don't have this. I do have this on my K1 Max because it was one of the newer versions. Now, one of the biggest changes that you're going to find in the K1C is really found in the extruder because it now features an all-metal gear set as well as a tri-metal hot end. Now, this hot end right here is something that you would be able to remove much easier than you'd with the previous one. Now the printer is still going to be a core XY, still has the steel rods and bearings, but as I mentioned, the actual bearings themselves, are not the bearings, but the actual pulleys on each side are a bit smaller. Now the cool thing about this printer is that it's still capable of printing 600 millimeters per second. The acceleration is just fantastic and still you see this. You do have the same color touchscreen, so we'll pan down so you can see this. The touchscreen hasn't really changed that, you know, it's the same one, right? Uh, so when you look at both of these printers compared one to the other, they're absolutely the same. However, they've also, uh, with the recent firmware updates and some of the changes going on, I've noticed that there's some other features that we're going to see in a couple seconds. Now the cover is still plastic. And one of the things that they include is they include uh, for this corner right here, this rubberized tape, which is going to prevent the actual uh, chain itself when it comes over from banging or, or scratching. This was something that I have on my K1 as it's moving over, you would hear like bang, bang as it was hitting this, and that's not the case now. Now, there's also been some improvements overall on the way the Bowden tube comes in. Um, it's not kinking. We'll come over here for a second. It's not kinking as it used to. Uh, the filament, as you were loading it, it kind of was a little bit rough as it's going through. I'm going to have to change my original, modify it somewhat, uh, because you just felt as you were feeling the uh, filling the fill 
as you're feeding the filament, you just felt that the filament was kind of like dragging or there was too much friction going on right here. You don't see this one at all. The other thing that I would say is that the lock and unlock mechanism here seems to be a little bit sturdier, has more feedback as you're engaging and disengaging it, and it's been really, really pleasant. I haven't had any clogs. Changing filament has been a breeze. Um, and again, it's, it's a really simple process, so I thought that that was pretty much improved. Now, one of the changes that you're going to see is that these pulleys right here are smaller. When you compare them to the, K1, the K1, you'll notice that in a couple seconds. Outside of that, I didn't really see many changes in the inside, outside of the fact that, you know, both of these are a little bit smaller, as you'll see in a second. I'll, I'll uh, pan over to the K1 in a second. Now, a lot of you have asked me to show the actual inside, so I've been posting pictures of it, so I just want to show you what the inside looks like. And one of the things that you'll notice is uh, here, one of the fans on the K1, I put a little muffler on top of it to make it a little bit quieter. I don't have it in this one, but I didn't really see many changes there. Now, here's where you can see clearly this is the K1. Notice how larger these are. And we'll look at this one right here. You can see it's much, much larger. And then you can see also, as you look at the cable chain, it rests much lower. And we'll go back to this one right here. You can see that this one rests a little bit higher, right? It's raised up. It's very much improved. And then you can see over here how low this one is. So I uh, gotta see if there's some any 3D printed parts that I can print to kind of mimic uh, the one that we have over there. Uh, this is definitely a much more improved experience. Now the material of both of the printers stays the same, the shell, the sides, and as we pan to the back here, just want to show you, you'll notice that they're pretty much identical too. So the only difference that I see here is once again, when you look at here how it's feeding the actual tube, and let me go ahead and pan a little bit further up so you guys can see that right there. This just seems that it has, again, less tension going through as this one does just based on the design. And you can see how higher up the actual chain rises. Back, same filament sensor on the back. And you can see that the only difference is that we have is that now we have this carbon filter here. And this carbon filter, I don't know how effective it's going to be, but you know, I just want to show you, notice how I can see almost through it. When I see carbon filters, they have a lot of carbon in it. This is activated carbon that's supposed to deal with um, you know, abrasive uh, odors. And I just don't know how effective this is when it has, it seems like very little. You can, you can literally see through it. So uh, I do have it connected. And I did check, as you look at here our K1C, and I look at my K1, I can just uh, put this in this area, possibly with an adapter, because it won't, you know, it's just, there you go, it will connect in really easy. So I may just print out another one for this one too. From a noise perspective, both of the printers seem to be performing at the same noise levels, although I've noticed some changes in the software where you can run this in a quiet mode as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit print on both of these so that we can get them going, right? And we'll just continue to let this go. Right, so both of them will print. And while those are running, I'm going to show you some of the prints that I just ran. Now first, uh, I do more functional prints, but I just wanted to bring in uh, this from Wexter. This is a pretty fantastic print. This is the actual Ghost Rider. And this was printed using uh, Polymaker PLA, right? And you can see the detail that you see here. I ran it with the stock settings, and this took about 10 hours to print, right? Now, I did slice this with Orca Slicer uh, because I just prefer that. And you can see that the print uh, came out pretty good for just, you know, out of the box, just setting it up and printing. Now, I also found on the SD card uh, several components that are going to allow you to mount the spool on the side of the printer. So these were all printed on the printer. And again, Polymaker PLA, matte PLA, and you can see what that looks like right there. All right. These came up pretty nice, and you can see again here what this part looks like. I'm glad that they've included this so that you can mount it on the side. What I really don't understand is if they're including the parts for it to be mounted on the side, why don't they just put it on the side? I think that would be a great add-on. Now, we also uh, printed PLA-CF. So let me show you this, and this is Creality's uh, Rapid PLA-CF. And you can see uh, the overall quality of this piece. This piece came out really nice. And again, uh, what I liked is that this was using the stock settings. Now, I did use Creality's uh, print software to run this. And 
overall, it came out really good. Now, one of the things that I'd like to see is maybe a, uh, the surface quality to be a little bit more. I could probably tweak it. I was, again, using all stock settings because I just wanted to see how well the profiles were tuned uh, without having to modify them. I like you know, cleaner uh, top layers. Uh, and sometimes you don't even have to iron it, but you know, maybe that's something that we would do. Now, I also like designing things, and I'm going to be doing some microphone tests coming up. And the microphone tests, I'm going to be having uh, two mics back to back uh, that I'm going to be comparing. So this was printed in this orientation that you see here. And I'm really, really happy with the overall quality that came out of the printer. And you know, it did have some tree supports, but it came out pretty clean. Uh, the other thing I went ahead and printed was the actual part, same part that we saw here that we printed um, using again, PLA, right? And this was fossil matte PLA. I printed it in, again, CF. Now, the carbon fiber material, it just is so much lighter. Uh, the piece also looks, I would say, a little bit sexier. But I, again, I would like to see, you know, smoother top layers. I don't really see them. And again, this was using without really any tweaking. No stock setting changes. Everything is identical. Everything is the same. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to start both printers at the same time. I did preheat them to try to give them um, a little faster start. So we're going to see how both of them start up. The experience for starting on both is pretty much the same, but I just wanted to give you guys an overall sense of how our things are going to go. We're going to print two benches, one on each one. This is going to be running a, again, uh, PLA, and this one's going to have the actual PLA CF from Creole. Now, one of the things I have noticed is, especially as you look at the K1C uh, and the K1, uh, I press uh, print on both of them at the same time. And what I have found is that the K1C at times starts printing before the actual K1. So we'll see if that's going to be the case today. And it just slightly beat it. You'll notice it, it started a little bit faster. Um, and you'll notice that this one will start next. And it's um, already going and started printing. So why that took place, I don't know. Um, I also noticed that there's a little error on this one. So I'm going to hit OK. Maybe that's why it kind of got delayed a little bit. But we'll see if this one will start up printing now. And you can see that the first layer has already started going down. We'll get a close-up of that. All right. So now the K1 has started up. And we see the print has already started. Let's get a closer look at what's going on here. So we'll get up from the top so you can see. We have about 1% already printed. And now as we go over here, we take a look at this guy. He's cooking with gas for sure. Started up, we're at about 2%. And it's starting to speed up really nicely. You can see that as well. Now, one of the things I also found interesting is that even with the PLACF setting, uh, settings that Creality has, they're pretty low. So they're printing at 220, and then also with a bed temperature of 43. And I typically would raise that. I'd probably make the bed temperature up to 50, and then maybe do this 230, 240. But the PLA is rated uh, as, I think it's as high as uh, 230. So you can see what's going on. Let's go ahead and pull back so you guys can see both of them running. And let's pull it back so you can see them both running. And we'll see how both of these benches come out and how much time it takes for each. Now let's take a look at how these uh, both came out. Again, this was, I wouldn't say a full minute, but at least it registers on the screen that it was a full minute faster. It was, it was maybe about 15 seconds faster in my book. And you can see what the overall quality of this guy looks like right here. So good quality. I do see some defects. Again, for something going that fast, Notice here in the corner, right? And if I bring this one on camera now, you can see the CF came out pretty nice. I really like, there's, there's definitely a weight difference. This feels a lot lighter. And again, these are the pre-sliced files that Creality provided. And this was really, I would say, calibrated for PLA, but I still ran the PLA CF just so that you can see. All in all, guys, so what are my thoughts? So overall, what are my thoughts? If you had to get another K1, 
the K1C is definitely a printer that I would consider. If this is your first printer that you're looking for and you're looking for something that's just gonna print out of the box, it prints out of the box. Setup was extremely easy, removed just three screws, powered it up, loaded some filament, and we were set to go. The Creality print software has been coming along. It's a little, I would say, improved. It doesn't have as many filament choices as I would like, but it actually works. I would highly recommend using an Orca Slicer or now even Bamboo uh, Labs version of the Orca Slicer it has profiles for the K1C. And in my home, since I have a couple of printers, that's what I choose to use. So overall, is this a recommend? It definitely is.